Hi everyone, I'm Alexandra Amore from StopSufferingAbout.com and I'm here today with Anna Debenham. Hi Anna. Hi. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. Thanks good. for having me. Good. Oh, I'm thrilled to have you here. I'm really excited about this conversation. So let me introduce you to our listeners. Anna Debenham arrived in Portland, Oregon in the spring of 2016 with no connections to prison or to the criminal justice system or any clue how to start a nonprofit. She did have one thing, an understanding of the mind. Through this understanding, Anna began to teach in prisons, created a research project that was accepted by the authorities of the prison, and built her own organization from scratch. The Inside Alliance was born in the car park of a woman's prison, and the rest is history. They have groups in a men's prison, a women's prison, and are scheduled to start in the youth prison in a few weeks. So, um, why don't you, Anna, why don't you just give us a little bit more about your background, your training in the principles, and how you um sort of made your way to working with prisoners and in prisons um well i um joined um the one thought institute um back in i think it was 2014-15 um 2015 i think 2014 something like that um because um i'd sort of heard about the three p's in in i don't know just in work and stuff and i'm like i didn't know what it was and i was curious um and actually went to a um a a talk with george pransky at Tukun. um and just what he just that was my first exposure and it just felt true to me everything that i'd studied before everything that i'd searched for everything i'd learned before kind of felt like it it, it felt like it made sense or it came together in like a little kind of nugget or something. Um, and it was like, okay, that's true. Um, so I got really interested and, um, then, um, joined, um, the one thought Institute. And, um, when I was there, uh, Jacqueline hollows, um, was just starting a research project at, um, HM only, um, one of the prisons, um, that she works in um at the time it, i think it was the first prison that she was working in um and she um needed a volunteer because we were she was starting out i think she'd done one group before and um you know it was expanding so um my hand shot up and um i got really curious so uh, i started volunteering with beyond recovery and um, was there for about a year um and i loved it i really just loved it um, and then moved back to the States because my husband is American and we'd lived in Portland for about 10 years and had then moved back to England and we were there for seven years. And then it just so happened that life took us back to the States. And so I knew I wanted to continue, um, working in prison. So that's, that's kind of how it started. Um, and, um, yeah. And then as you say, you put it all together, uh, in the, in the parking lot, um, with a woman from the YMCA, is that right? Um, well, I'd kind of uh, just started having conversations. I didn't really know how best to get into a prison. Um, and kind of one conversation led to another, which led to another, which led to another. And I um, uh, was actually running a, a group of my own um, through uh, the religious services. And then another group, and I was doing their life skills program um and um that was in the men's prison and i was just doing it kind of because i enjoyed it i wasn't thinking i was going to start an organization or do anything with it it was just something that i loved doing and then um i had a conversation with susan stoltenberg who um runs the ywca and she got really interested in what we're doing and they already had a women and children's program in the women's prison so she got me into the women's prison and said this is a program i really think that would benefit from from being in here um and when we were in there having our meeting she had said um the, the people that we were having a conversation with said look, if you want this program to kind of go further than just a volunteer program, you need to do research because it has to be evidence-based. Mm. So I was like, okay, I can, I'll figure that out. So um, then we were in a car park and I was like, well, shit, I can't do a research project just under me. Like, you know, it's, I need to be more professional than that. So then, um, so then she offered me fiscal sponsorship if we were going to be a nonprofit. 
and then um, we came up with the Insight Alliance and she sp- fiscally sponsored us for about the first year, year and a half mm. until then we, we got our own nonprofit now and we're doing our own thing. But that was kind of, you know, very organically kind of came into being from not thinking that I ever wanted to run a nonprofit. You know, it's one of those things where people can say, oh, nonprofit, such hard work, such hard work. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that, really. People kept trying to talk me out of it. But you realize that's just thought. Like it's not, it's not, a nonprofit doesn't mean hard work. A nonprofit just means a nonprofit. It's only hard if you think it's hard. Otherwise, you're just doing the next thing in front of you and figuring it out as you go, which mm-hmm. turns out that's what we're doing. And, you know, it may look like hard work, but to me, it's just kind of like, just, you know, just get on with it. Um, and, there's a, you know, you just sort of show up and, and figure it out. So that's what I'm doing. Oh, that's lovely. So let me actually, I pulled something from your website. Let me read that as well to people listening. So the Inside Alliance works in prisons and in the community with a simple focus, understanding the limitless nature of the human mind and recognizing our own innate well-being, that everything we need to thrive already exists within us. So that's what you bring to the prisoners that you're speaking to, um, that despite their circumstances, um, they still have that innate well-being and um, wisdom within them. So tell me how you start that conversation with a group of prisoners. Where do you begin? Um, Well, um, I I always start with with well-being because, um, you know, it's... uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of, we don't get into thought until a bit later, but you know, it's, it, it, it's interesting. I, I, um, I start, I've started of late, um, to, to do an exercise, which, um, I found really helpful. Um, and I got from, um, Robin and Ken, uh, Manning, um, that in a, in a, in a business group I did with them. Um, and it's, it's basically getting the guys to close their eyes and think about a time when they felt at peace, when they felt okay. Mm-hmm. It may have been yesterday. It may have been several years ago. It may have been for a minute. It may have been for a period of time. But just to think about a time when you felt fit, feel at peace. And then to, then to think about the qualities of that feeling. Um, and then as they call them out and you write them on the board, there's all sorts of, you know, well, all sorts of you get the same answers pretty much every time you know calm connected hope resilience love understanding you know um well all the all the things that that come from that feeling of of well-being and then you know talk about that as like well you know that's did you have to try and get there and they're like no it just comes naturally and it's like yeah well that that's because it's built in and um, and that's what we're, that's what we're wanting to get back to. It's not something that you have to learn. It's not something that you have to kind of, you know, be a certain person to be able to achieve this. Everybody sitting in this room, you know, you know, when they felt at peace, these are the qualities of that experience. And, and they, and they see that, that yeah, that's true. It's mm-hmm. true. It's not something that you have to learn. It's not something that goes away because they've, they've thought about it in that moment and they, and that's what they feel. And so we kind of start there, you know, and then everybody has their own experience of well-being, um, what that what that means um, to them, and to you know, it doesn't always look like love and peace. You know, one guy, you know, what, you know, the other week, the beginning of class was like, I don't, I've never felt that. I've never felt peace. Like I, that's, I, I, I grew up having to fight for everything. Like I had to fight, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Well, tell me more about that. You know, and then we get into that kind of his experience of fighting is like really, it's, you know, he's like, yeah, is that like resilience? He's like, yeah, it was resilience. And can you count on it? It's like, yeah, I can totally count on it. I know I've got, I know I can count on it. It's like I, I've done it my whole life. And I was like, yeah, that's the same thing. That's well being. It may not look like, you know, it, it, peace and love, um, but that's well being. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I, I got it. I got it. So everybody is going to kind of come up, you know, they, they've got their own experience. So it's like drawing out what it means to them um, to, to feel that well-being and to kind of um, come from there because the more you start to see it, the more you see it and that, that's the more you kind of come from that place. So um, we, we kind of start with um, looking at what everyone's, everyone's experience of, um, of well-being, um, you know. And well, actually one guy the other night, um, yeah, well, actually yesterday, where are we, Thursday, no, it was on what, Tuesday, we started a new group, um, 
and uh, and he was talking about when he was a, a, um, a first responder, I think, in the army or was first responder or something. And he said, you know, at the time of a crisis, like it was like everything slowed down into slow motion. And his he didn't he wasn't thinking about every, anything. He was just like he knew exactly what to do in the mo- in the moment. Like there was something that took over. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know and all my over, uh, all my feelings and everything just you know just got went to the side and I just you know just did what I needed to do in the moment and like that that was his you know his like that that feels like well being that feels like that intelligence of life that's kind of living me um, and, and so he you know it's just kind of just really listening to people's stories and seeing what it means for them and kind of drawing that out so they can kind of get a better sense of what it what are we talking about when we say innate well-being because some people say I've never had that I've never had that Mm -hmm. it's like no you've had you've got it you've got it yeah yeah and I love it that you're you point out that there are no exceptions you know there's never somebody even if they don't believe it themselves there's never anybody who hasn't who doesn't have that it's just it's yeah. innate as we say but, you know to be honest people who come into the room people who stay in the in the um um in the no one doesn't have a sense of it yeah you know because yeah. everyone you, you know even if someone tells a story you can find well-being in it you know so if they if they don't resonate with it initially and they're talking and you're looking for it because you're always looking for well-being, you know, and you can find it. And so you, you know, you're just it's you start getting eyes for drawing that out and, and being able to see. And so everyone, everyone, I've never, I've never experienced anyone in. I've worked with hundreds of people now and men and women um, who don't know what I'm, you know, who who really don't know what I'm talking about. It just doesn't. It just not, you know, because you know it's innate. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And so. Um, one of the things your website mentioned was that you're working on a two-year research project yeah. um, in, a, in a women's medium security prison. Um, so what's the objective uh, to that project and what does that involve? Um, well, we actually started it in the men's prison. Um, what we're doing in the women's uh, prison is the random randomized control group. So it's more robust. Um, but um, the idea, well, the idea initially was because they said that we needed it if we want to be a, a legitimate program, we, you know, but it measures, it's got lots of universal measures of, of, of well-being and, and, and states of mind. So, you know, it measures depression and anxiety and stress and, you know, suicidal tendencies, um, addiction stuff and, um, you know, well-being and all sorts of different measures. I mean, I knew nothing about research when we started this and I, I still, uh, you know, had trouble kind of explaining exactly what all the different measures are, but there's different, different measures that, that kind of, that, you know, that are universal. So you can measure it against the same kind of with different interventions, um, measuring the same things. Um, but we've, we've got through, a year of that so we're working with a professor called dr sarah bowen who does a lot of research in addiction and mindfulness and she got really interested in this um and so we're working with two phd students and um who are who are lovely um and uh, we're just coming we're about we, we we've got to sort of year one um and there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a we're, we're now having to because it's a longevity study because it's we want to see about recidivism rates too so it's not just kind of you know, we'll test you after the 10 week program. It's like, we'll test you after three months and then we'll test you again after six months and then we'll test you again after a year. So as we do groups, like, you know, back to back to back, I just get this right. We've got another, we've got another group to test. And so I'm online trying to, you know, because there's a website here, you can find out where everyone is, whether they're, you know, paroled and what county they're paroled to. And then you've got to get in touch with their parole officer and then you've got to find them and then you've got to send them the packages. And then, so there's just like this, my, my office at the moment is like a bomb site because we're around we're at three months and six months and then we're graduating a women's program tomorrow. And so all the control group comes back in. So there's just, you know, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of um, testing, but, but I saw them last week and they said so far that it's looking really good. All the, all the things that are meant to be going down, like, you know, uh, anxiety and all that stuff. A lot of the things, everything that's meant to be going down is going down and the things that are meant to be going up are going up. So it's like, okay, it's worth it. Yes. Yes. Amazing. And so recidivism recidivism, is the tendency to to repeat, be a repeat offender. Is that correct? Yeah. And so over the long term, you'll be testing for whether or not people in your group um, are less likely to reoffend and people in the control group might be more likely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. Amazing. 
yeah. yeah. Well, that's the hope. I mean, a lot of the, you know, because you, you realize that the, the, the conditions and the habits of thought and the things that go on and, and people's tendency to go back to what they know, you know, and so it's, um, um, it, it's, you know, when people get out and, um, and we do groups on the outside, um, so helping people transition back into the community, you know, because it can, they can, once they get the hang of this and they start to see thought and see feeling, you know, you can get out and then you can go, no, I, I get it, but th this is real. This, yeah. this isn't thought such and such is happening. This isn't, you know, so you, you, you navigate, um, different, um, different situations and how people can kind of just get get to another level of their understanding and and you know and sort of um kind of going deeper and um but you know most people are do who i'm in contact with um and now i'm trying to track down as well seem to be doing really well so it's, it's nice it's good to see mm -hmm. oh that's great and i was thinking yeah. about it too there's a there's something on your website where you say a lot of people say you know if i had known this 10 years ago i wouldn't be in this position right now in a prison yeah and so, you know, that brought to mind to me that, you know, people who are having a prison experience, who are incarcerated, are kind of almost the ultimate um, example of how we get so attached to our thoughts and we believe that it's an outside in experience. And when we feel we don't have any other choices but to respond to what's happening on the outside, um, that's when our behavior can, you know, go off the rails and that kind of thing. So it just seems to me that working with people in prisons, it's, it's such a 180, you know, it's sort of an extreme example of a 180 for, for those people. It must be. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, sometimes it's just a one-off um, thing that where they, you know, um, the shit hit the fan, so to speak. And, and, yeah. you know, and it, it's um, a lot of the, a lot of the men when we first started, I mean, that's the reason we're working in the youth prison now is because they said, look, if I knew this, yeah, 10 years ago, I wouldn't be here. We need to work with youth because, you know, they, you know, I mean, I've got a guy who's coming out of prison. He's now 60. He's coming in and out of prison his whole life. You know, he was in, he was in juvenile prison and he's like, this is the last time I'm ever coming to prison. Like I've got this, you know, and, yeah. and you know, it's true. Like there's certain people that you just know that it's true. And, and, and you just think if I, if, if you'd caught me back when I was 20 or 15 and I understood the mind, I would be reactive or being so afraid of my feelings that I want to numb them without drugs and alcohol and then get myself into trouble because I need to feed a habit because I don't like how I feel you know all those kind of things that when they have a, a new understanding of the mind it's like it just doesn't make sense to need to escape your feelings because um, they're not personal and they don't mean anything and they can just flow through all, all on the mo their own if you let them you know what I mean so it's like people start to um but there's we, we we have you know people who who've, yeah um you know and there's one woman last week who you know is actually in tears just saying she's in light she's got life um and you know a lot of the women seemingly that are in prison have um a lot of it is abuse and sexual abuse and like there's a, there's a lot of self-defense and all those kind of things and and she was she's like if i you know i feel like if i'd known this you know, when I was the day I was committing my crime, I just couldn't get out of my head what I needed to do. And I just because I thought my thoughts were real mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have done it had I not had I had I understood that that's just it's not real, you know. And so there's, you know, it's 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 kind of a double edged sword because it's quite, you know, they go, why didn't why isn't why, this should be in schools? Why hasn't anyone told me this before? You know, because I think there's a lot of obviously a lot of struggling and stuff that goes on. But um, they um, they're really they're all really excited that we're working with youth. Mm. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine it, it must give them some hope, as you say, that, that for people who are getting in trouble at a young age, it will change the trajectory of their lives. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're really cool too. the youth that we're going to be working with. They are just so hungry for it. It's like they've never learned. They've, they've come through all sorts of, a lot of them don't have parents or in foster care and all sorts of different things. And they're just really hungry to learn. Mm -hmm. They were so excited, the fact that we're starting and, and they were like, right, you know, we came in last week. Can we start next week? Can we start next week? It's like, well, no, hang on a minute. Wait, I need a minute. I need a minute. <laughs> yeah. We've been waiting for this for months and now I need a bit more time, you know. So we're starting in the, on the next week, the, the 10th. So we're Wednesday the 10th, our first 10-week first program. Yeah. Oh, lovely. And so we talked a little bit about how you 
um, first introduce people to the idea that they are whole and that and their innate wisdom and well-being. And so then when you move on to, to teaching them about thought, can you just give us an idea of how you approach that? Because this is the thing I always get sort of inspired by is that in a situation like a prison, I, you know, despite what I know about this, this understanding, I think it would be really hard to feel at peace, you know, sitting in a jail cell. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. You'd be surprised. There's a mm -hmm. lot of peace. It's, it's um, now there's, a, there's, there's more peace than, um, well, I think as you, again, you start with people's experience, you know, they, they can all, they all see that some days they get pissed off with people and some days they don't. Some days things bother them and some days they don't. And it may take a minute, you know, so that there's an example of a, of a guy who, you know, was going, nah, no, I don't, I know this is, this is bullshit. I, I got, you know, my, my bunkie, he claps every time he, cause he's got, a t you know, a television and he has his headphones in and he claps every time his sport, you know, shoots a goal or does whatever. I don't know what sport it was. And he claps and it drives me nuts. And he's an asshole and, da -da 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 and goes on and on. And I'm, I'm not going to try and convince him uh, that it's not real because to him it looks real. Like he wouldn't, if he wasn't there, I wouldn't be feeling angry. So don't tell me it's my thinking. It's because it's him. He's right there. And then, you know, you sort of, you know, move on with a class or, you know, you, he starts to see, it. anyway, you just get on with it. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and then like, I think it was about week seven, he came back and was like, okay, now I get it. I know what you mean. And I was like, why, what happened? And he said, you know, I was going down to the chow hall and I bumped into the clapper and, <laughs> um, and he said, Hey man, sorry, no disrespect. And he said, I just, I just saw him in a different way. Like I just had a different experience of him. And then I just. I don't care if he claps. Like, why do I care if he claps? He's enjoying himself. He's just, I, I just, now, now it doesn't make sense to me why I care if he claps. It's like, he's just, I like that he's enjoying himself. Good for him. And so he could see that he's still clapping and he's, had, he's having a completely different experience. And so when people share those sorts of thick things, other people go, oh yeah, no, I get, I see that. And, 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 you know, they can have an experience of a guard one day that's driving them mad and another day they, it's water off a duck's back, you know, and things don't stick. And so they start to see how the mind changes just by itself. And they can see that if they don't run with a line of thinking about something, if they don't, then, you know, they don't work themselves up or they'll have insights into kind of seeing that they're creating a rage inside them because they're spinning on something and then they start, they just start to see it. They, you know, but it, it's, it's so easy in a way because they, they can all have good days and they can all have bad days. Exactly the same with us. Some days they feel hope and some days they feel hopeless, you know, and, and, and when they realize that, that nothing needs to change in the outside world for them to change how they feel, then it's, they, they start to, they start to get it and then they start to see it more. And then there's all sorts of different experiences or examples like that where, yeah, I, you know, I, I would have reacted to this, but I realized, you know, this isn't my movie, you know, it's like not my monkey, not my circus, you know, <laughs> right. So, and they, 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 they see that and then they react less and things move through them. And, um, it's a, it's a, an, and so they, they can also feel a lot of hope and a lot of, um, you know, um, they just see things more positively that there's, there's, there's possibilities and, and there's opportunities and rather than just seeing everything as a dead end and, you know, and realizing that they're not their labels. So if they think they're a criminal, they think they're an addict, there's no way out of that. That's who they are. Then there's not a lot of hope. But if you realize that's just a word that describes behavior or it describes something, it's not who you are. It's just what you did. Um, that there's something deeper than that. That well-being is something that's that's deeper. That's living you. That that you know you're, you're not an addict. You're not a criminal. Um, it's something that describes words. I mean, describes something, and they start to see that it's not who they are. And then they can feel. They can look beyond that. They can see beyond that kind of wall um, to to something else. And so there, therefore, there's a lot more hope. And then they get more positive, and it all looks very different. Mm -hmm. And when you first started working with Beyond Recovery and Jacqueline in the UK, and, and you had had a training, three principles training before that, were you surprised by the differences that you saw? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, well, because I could, I, I did a, I've done a lot of, I mean, I had my own addictions and bulimia and various different things kind of growing up for a long time. And, 
and, and I had really insecure and very kind of, you know, a lot of self-worth issues and all sorts of normal stuff, but it was, you know, felt debilitating to me. Um, and so I've done a lot of therapy and I've done a lot of searching and, you know, all different Buddhism and yoga, yoga philosophy and Taoism and I've got meditation and all sorts of different things. Um, and so there was a way that when I started to see this, I was like, of course I'm seeing it because I've done so much work. I've done a lot of work on myself. Like I had some awareness anyway. Mm -hmm. And then working in prison, you realize it makes no difference. It has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it. And people who've never done a group, have never done a class, have never had any other, you know, possibility of, of any other, you know, spiritual, you know, psycholo psychological, anything. Um, have insights exactly the same as anybody else and it is it's not required that anything in actual fact sometimes that can be a hindrance you know because you get that kind of you know whatever but um but you start to see the possibility that anyone anyone can share anyone who comes into the room um you know um and and um has the possibility to change and we saw people at the beginning you know, of classes, I'd, I'd sort of get in my head. I was like, Oh, I wonder, I know they're definitely, no, they're not going to see it. They definitely will see it there. They seem really like they got it. And then you, you, you're always wrong. You know, people, that, <laughs> is it really, everyone starts to get it, but you, it's for somebody you think, Oh my God, no, he's never going to, I mean, he's never, you know, it's going to be a disaster. There's just too much ego and too much bravado and too much. There's a lot of, and, and then it's like, they drop into something and then they're, they, they're just, it's amazing. So it, it totally, um, kind of i'm a marvel at you know the human spirit um and its ability to kind of bounce back after you can hear i mean a story that's just i won't even go into it but a story i heard today and this woman who gave birth in prison um and she wasn't even allowed to hold her baby mm. um, they showed it to her and that was you know for her you know like for, and then she went just got through cancer and she's so positive and and she's in there for life and she's so upbeat and and just so um you know just full of love and full of um forgiveness and so much um and you just think oh my god it's just amazing it amazes me the human the human's ability to kind of you know move through things that we think could traumatize or kind of be there for life and not be able to get past it and all these women um, you know, today have gone through God knows all sorts of things and here they are sitting in the room and they're all okay and they're all doing great, you know, mm -hmm. so it's really, it's, it's such a positive, um, um, experience and just seeing everyone kind of get over themselves and get over all the stuff. It's, it's, and kind of come back to themselves. It's, 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 I always, you know, say I've got the best job in the world because it's just so fun to see. Yes. Well, and I think, I mean, you make such a good point that, um, and I'm not going to say it as well as you did, but just that what, what I think this really sort of proves for lack of a better word is the fact that we do have innate well-being and wellness, because if, if that weren't the case, then this would be the population that, you know, the group of people who wouldn't be able to, to feel those things, to feel mm -hmm. that kind of freedom and peace and, and understand where their experience is coming from. So yeah, I just think it's such a great example of, of um, yeah, just kind of showing the principles and how they work. That's yeah. Amazing. yeah, absolutely. Um, we're almost out of time, so I just want to wrap up quickly, but I wanted to ask you before we go, is there anything that you're working on that's coming up in the future that you're excited about or you can share about it? You said your office is a bomb right now, but... <laughs> So, I don't know. I, I, I kind of get to the end of the week and actually do a bit, pretty good job tidying it up at the moment, just because of the research project. But yeah. um, I mean, to me, I, I'm just you know, the, all of it is exciting to me. I'm, I'm really excited to work with youth. Um, we've wanted to do it for a long time, and it, it kind of it seemingly took longer to get into the OIA, which is the Oregon Youth Authority, which is totally separate from DOC, the Department of, of Corrections, mm. um, because it's a, it's a whole different thing. And so I'm, I'm really excited about working with youth. Um, I'm excited about our teacher training. We've got some guys who have been through our teacher training who hopefully will be able to teach the youth in prison where they came from many years ago, um, who are doing amazingly well and, you know, kind of living um really kind of healthy um robust lives with a very good understanding of, of the principles and um, so these are 
these are prisoners who are now teaching what yeah. you're doing. Oh, yeah. Wow. So yeah. So they they did our t there's a there's three in this last group in our first group three guys who did our teacher training, oh, who wow. who want to then go on who will then come and work with the youth. Um, hopefully we've got to get them cleared, but it'll, it'll happen. It, you know, it can take a bit of time, but yeah. So it's they want to pay it forward and they want to kind of work with youth because they all grew up and you know a couple of them anyway. Um, you know, went to prison when they were quite young. Mm, wow. Oh, that's amazing. Well, yeah. thank you again so much, Anna, for talking with me today. And so why don't you let everyone know where they can find out more about you and your work? Um, we have a, a website um, called the insight Alliance, um, dot org, And that's, I mean, it, it's very basic. It's very simple. I mean, I've got, I've got actually, you know, it's one of my jobs is to kind of actually redo, especially all the, what we're doing page and stuff because it's changed. Um, but that's a good place to kind of um, see what we're doing. Um, and I mean, we have a Facebook page. I sometimes forget to post things on there because I do it on my home, my own Anna Debenham page. Um, but when I get around to it, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a newsletter on our, our website that I do in spites from prison. So different people's stories that, that are really inspiring. I, I kind of post um, and, and things like that. So yeah, just I'd, I'd, the, the website is the best place to get hold of us. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I'll put links to that in the show notes. Sorry, what yeah. were you going to say? Oh, no, I was going to say, well, because it, it will probably be on the website as well. I just, the, I did a TED talk recently in oh, Portland. Wow. Um, and, um, and so that will, that was a, a, a big kind of, a, well, big deal for me anyway. I've never spoken in front of three and a half thousand people. Um, but it was talking about the work we're doing in prison and, and this understanding. So um, that will be on there too at some point when it comes out. because It was quite recent. Okay, fantastic. And, it, and I'll, um, I'll try to, I'll link to it in the show notes. If it's not available, I'll just keep my eyes open and then put the link there. Okay, I'll let you know. Okay, cool. perfect. Yeah. Well, thanks again so much. Take care. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.